First I want to start with an introduction on uh, why I'm reviewing a film from 1958. So it goes back to when my girlfriend and I were choosing to watch films a few years back. We always struggled to find, uh, to pick a film because we, ha we have uh, extensive lists on you know, Netflix, Amazon Prime. Uh, it was actually my girlfriend who suggested that we look at the IMD imdb.com, uh, their top 250 films of all time, and to watch those in turn. IMDb is the Internet Movie Database. For those who don't know, it's one of the best film websites on the internet. And these films are ranked by the public. Uh, so what we did is we took a snapshot of the top 250 when we started. And we've been uh, making our way through those films. So Touch of Evil was Gemma's choice. As it's a classic, she tends to go for the classics. So let's get into the review. <laughs> Tell me who's in charge here. Why, well, as you've heard of Hank Quinlan, our local police celebrity. What are you trying to do? We're trying to strap you to the electric chair. You framed that boy. Framed him! This is Mrs. Vargas talking. I just wanted to make sure I wouldn't be disturbed. Don't you worry, Mrs. Vargas. Nobody's going to get through to you. Touch of Evil was released in 1958. It was directed by written by and starred Orson Welles, I think he did the catering or something like that as well. Also stars Charlton Heston and uh, Marlena Dietrich. It tells the story of a, an American building contractor who's killed by a car bomb on the American-Mexico border. Charlton Heston plays a Mexican detective called Vargas who's currently investigating the, the crime family in the, on the Mexico border. Orson Welles plays Hank Quinlan, uh, an American a detective who's trying to solve the case from the American side as the car bomb was detonated on the American side but obviously originated on the Mexican side. These two policemen are obviously clashing with each other as the film progresses. So let's deal with why I turned my face at a Charlton Heston playing a Mexican. He's not a Mexican as you probably know and it's quite topical at the moment with a lot of white actors who've been voicing or playing black actors are stepping down from their roles at the moment so it seemed very topical that uh, Charlton Heston, a well-known white man, is playing, uh, has been sort of coloured up to look like a Mexican, got this sort of pencil moustache. Um, I read on the IMDb trivia that one of his greatest regrets was that he didn't put a Hispanic accent on, which seems incredible to me. I think the, the regret should be taking the part in the first place but I suppose this is 1958, so things were very different then. There are lots of racist undertones throughout the whole film. As the Hank Quinlan, the Orson Welles part, is doesn't trust the Mexicans. They're all they're all criminals to him. Sounds a bit like someone in power in America, doesn't it? First off, I want to say this film is odd. It's really unusual. It's it's really fast paced. As the editing is really pacey for really unusual for films we've watched. From the 50s definitely one thing i've realized to some of these classics is editing film ed modern film editing seems to have really come into play in the 70s really and a lot of these old classics they're just so laborious sometimes the scenes just go on and on so it's a very chaotic film at the start there's lots of characters lots of shouting and talking over each other um, there's three or four characters on screen all at the same time all trying to talk over each other it's quite confusing, you don't really know what's going on to start with, uh, who wants what and what's, what's really going on. And the whole film is similar to this really, you, you don't, it's hard to get a real grasp on what's happening. The plot's really loose and it uh, doesn't gel very well. Um, it feels like Wells was wanting to make technically another masterpiece as he's done before. And he has pulled it off with this because it looks incredible. Uh, some of the tracking shots are just amazing for, for the time as well you just don't see these kind of tracking shots in films this old the opening shot in particular is a, is a real highlight you can actually watch the whole sequence on youtube if you want to have a look the bomb gets placed in the car and then we track the car down the street for about three and a half minutes and it's one continual shot of a sort of a crane tracking shot really impressive and quite tense as well because you obviously know this bomb's going to go off at some point so the acting ranges um, Orson Welles is really good actually, he's really, he plays this 
really unpleasant character, not likeable whatsoever. Um, Charlton Heston is quite stiff as the protagonist, and you don't really, you don't really, I didn't really engage with him anyway. I didn't really get pulled into his story. I didn't really care. Janet Leigh as um, Vargas, his wife, was quite an unusual character again. Again, you didn't really get a feel for her. She was being kind of strong at some points and standing up for herself and at the time she was doing really stupid things and there's a sort of side plot um, where the gang's trying to capture her it's strangely drawn out you don't really know what's going on what, why why they're doing this what, what's their plan what they're trying to do I can't talk about acting without mentioning an actor called Dennis Weaver who plays a hotel manager in what must be one probably top ten overacted scenes of all time it is quite incredible have a look but there was that party a party it's a mess awful mess where they think i'm going to clean it up they got nothing coming terrible terrible wrong cabin number seven Right in the middle of the afternoon. Cabin number seven. Some here. Ah! I'm getting out of here. So there you go. Not sh quite sure why you would choose to act like that. Apparently they wrote an entire backstory for this character. It doesn't really play an important part whatsoever. It could have just been could have been two minutes, but they fill out his role with this crazy acting and it's just really, really distracting and odd. We were laughing all the way through it, to be honest. Marlena Dietrich's role is totally pointless. You just take it out and it wouldn't change the film at all. She hams it up as she always did. She's always entertaining. She's, she's good on screen. She's got a good screen charisma, but her, her role is just, just totally pointless. I had quite a few negatives with this film, but I was always entertained by it. It never really dragged. It was never boring. It was incredible to look at, fun to watch. But the ending just really dragged. They're trying to get this confession out of the bent cop. Uh, it's obvious and you know you know what's going to happen. There's no tension whatsoever. Uh, it just didn't work for me. It really didn't work. So to summarise, it's a, it's a really odd film. It is, it is entertaining. Um, it's impeccably made, you can see that. The acting ranges in quality. The plot is really stumbly and... and just doesn't really go anywhere it's it's a real style of a substance film i think and uh, the ending doesn't land as well quite a poor ending so my score for touch of evil is six and a half out of ten if you like what you've seen please click the subscribe button which should be around here somewhere thanks for watching